What is up, Arrow fans? I'm Tyre from ZD Comics. Welcome to my review of Season 3, Episode 3, Corto Maltez. So I'm going to start off my non-spoiler review, and of course I'll get into the spoilers later, but I'll give you a warning, so don't worry. Anyway, I give this episode a 6 out of 10. Yes, a 6 out of 10. Probably all of you are going to hate in the comment section down below, but please don't. I'm just giving my honest opinion, and I just got to say, I think the, this season so far for Arrow has been pretty much medium. It's been on that, like medium scale it's i wouldn't say it's that much better than season two and i honestly thought season three was going to be at least start out with a really good jump now i'm not going to say that the rest of the season won't be as good but i'm just trying to say that the first three episodes have been pretty good i mean sarah's death was pretty shocking and pretty awesome but that was pretty much the only exciting part about it now the reason i'm giving it this uh score is probably because of the flash now i don't want to mix these two shows together too much but Pretty much, The Flash is also aired on CNW, and The Flash has been doing absolutely outstanding. I mean, every episode of The Flash so far, all three of them, <laughs> have honestly been so good. I mean, really, especially the last episode. And now that I know that CNW can produce such a good show and have such good actors and have such a good comic book feel to it, I feel like they should be doing the same with Arrow. Now, I'm not trying to say that Arrow should be like The Flash, but definitely the Arrow should have more of a comic book feel to it. And keep it still original tone, you know, keep it that darker Batman-like tone, which obviously it does have. And this episode was pretty good. It was actually focused a lot out of Starling City because the main focus was to bring Thea Queen back to, um, you know, Starling City. And basically, Alvaro was like, you know, come on, Thea, let's come back. And by the end of the episode, a little things are figured out. I don't want to spoil it for you. And there's actually... Two big spoilers I want to mention right now, but I won't, of course. And both of them have to do with Thea, Malcolm Merlin, and Starling City. So this episode was, like I said, mainly focusing on Oliver trying to bring Thea Queen back to Starling City. And that was, it was alright. I did like how this, uh, we actually got to see Arrow work in an environment that's not a city. It was pretty cool, and most of the time he wasn't even in the hood, and he didn't even have a bow. So we actually saw a lot of good fighting scenes. So that was good, but it's just... I feel like they should up Arrow a little bit. I feel like they should just kind of give him more strength. I feel like they should give him more skills, and I feel like they should just make him better. I feel like he's kind of just another another person that can fight really well. I feel like they're not – like, they're making Arrow seem like he's, like – he get flash his name. He's kind of – he's kind of like – the start of DC's mini TV universe, I feel like they should just make him better. I feel like he's not as good as he could be. I feel like he should be more powerful. I feel like his costume should be better. I feel like they should have more weapons in his costume. And I feel like he should just look like he's more well-trained. Because I honestly don't see it. I don't get that vibe. And it's just like, it's disappointing, you know? So when we do get that Hour vs. Flash episode, it's going to be... It's going to be kind of surprising to see what Arrow is really going to bring to the table when he has to go up against a metahuman. And no, I don't count Deathstroke as a metahuman. He just used a little bit of serum that made him stronger, which, by the way, made Season 2 really freaking awesome. And Season 3 so far? Meh. So anyway, let's talk about Diggle for a little bit. So Diggle and Lila, their relationship's pretty cute so far. I mean, I guess. I'm not really that interested in it. But a um, little, you know, factual information is getting thrown around in this episode. A lot of it is going around about Argus and, of course, Skinny Waller. And it's pretty interesting, but like I said, it's not really grabbing my attention. Now, what did grab my attention would be what happened at the end of the episode, but I don't want to bring that up. So the best part about this entire episode would by far be what's going on with Sarah's death. So Sarah died, and basically Laurel is so devastated by this. And we finally got that... Laurel is just like, oh, I have anger inside of me. So she's actually going to start getting trained by, of course, Wildcat. And that's probably the best part about everything so far. Wildcat, they chose a great actor, by the way. Laurel, never really liked her, but I'm starting to warm up to her. I mean, I like how she's trying to take over the, you know, take over Sarah's role and, you know, trying to save, be basically a superhero. And she's, of course, is trying to wear her jacket and saying her jacket makes her feel like she is you know, respecting or, I guess, honoring Sarah's death. And I know it's pretty good. Honestly, the problem I have with Laurel is I don't think she's that good of an actor, to be honest. I mean, I guess she's all right, but I just feel like they could have chose a better actor for her. And she's good. It's just I feel like they're giving her so much time on screen 
that she's not that good, you know? I mean, she has to definitely get better to have so much time on screen. And obviously, we're going to be seeing her a lot, late, uh, you know, recently and for the rest of the season because she's going to literally become the Black Canary. Now, I hope she gets her Sonic Scream somehow. I don't know how they would do that. I just hope it happens. So that's pretty much all I have to say for my non-spoiler review. Like I said, I give it a 6 out of 10. It definitely could be better. Now, I want to hear a review in the comment section down below if you haven't seen the episode yet. But, of course, I want you to watch the episode and come back to this part of my review. So now I'm going to get into the spoilers. So basically what happens at the end of the episode is that Sarah's ex-girlfriend or basically her lover at some point when she was with the League of Assassins. I can't remember her name. It was, of course, is the daughter of Ra's al Ghul, who is the main villain of the season. So I feel like when they do bring in that storyline with Ra's al Ghul, season three is going to go from here to, like, up here. So I'm not saying, like, I'm being optimistic about the rest of the season, but I'm going to be honest with my review, which is a 6 out of 10. So, you know, Sarah's little girlfriend came and shot an, almost shot an arrow at Oliver and was basically like, where's Sarah? So I'm betting she is going to be pretty disappointed when she figures out her little ex-girlfriend is bleh, dead. So uh, pretty much what's going to happen in the next episode is... One, Oliver's going to find out that Malcolm Rowland is alive and everything like that, so that's going to be awesome. And he has been a little bit questionable about what's going on with Thea. Now, of course, at the end of the episode, a man dropped his coffee on Thea's hand, and Thea didn't really stutter. And, of course, when you get hot copy, you know, coffee dropped on your hand, you're going to be like, oh, my God, oh, so hot. But she didn't do that, so Oliver kind of got a little bit like, yeah, what the hell's going on here? What's wrong with Thea? So obviously he's going to end up finding out that Thea has been training with Malcolm Merlin maybe in the next episode. And we're also going to be getting more into the League of Assassins, which is the one thing in this season so far I'm actually really excited for. The League of Assassins and Raz al Ghul and Tali al Ghul and Nyz al Ghul, which is like that ex-girlfriend's name and everything. So pretty damn awesome. That's by far the best part of the episode was Black Cat and Laurel and the League of Assassins. Now the whole Corto Maltese scenes... Where, you know, Oliver had to use a handmade bow he made in a hotel, which was pretty cool. Those scenes were, like, alright, but I just feel like Oliver isn't... I don't see him as a superhero yet. That's a problem I have. When you don't see a character as a superhero, you just see him as another character. So, I really only see him as a superhero when I see him with his costume on. And I feel like his costume... Honestly, I feel like for next season, they should just give him, like, um... Give him, like, an armored costume almost. Give him, like, a Batman-type suit. Like, have his suit be, like, almost, like, three layers. One where it's, like, metal. Second one where, like, the outside looks like it's kind of just, like, leather. But really, like, he's, like, almost bulletproof. He is, like, enhanced strength. I feel like he should just totally, like, superpower him up and everything. So, that's just my opinion. People will probably hate on me for that. But I just feel like they should do that to Oliver. I feel like they should do that. Because right now, he literally has no covering. Like his, like his, what he wears could probably block a few bullets, maybe not, not really at all, actually, but it could definitely block a few punches and resist some strength. But like, it's just, I don't see how he can be that powerful. And it just, I don't know. I mean, I'm all miscombobulated with like basically where Arrow is and his powers and his strength. It just, it kind of is upsetting. So I can't wait for the League of Assassins storyline. That's all I really can think about. So anyway. I give this episode a 9 out of 10. So anyway, I give this episode a 6 out of 10. I want to hear your review in the comment section down below. Right now, comment down below on your little phone, tablet, I don't care, saying what you thought of this episode. Don't forget to like this video. It really helps out my channel. Anyway, I'm Tommy from ZD Comics, and I want you to have Ready, aim, fire.